Hey kids, History Channel guy here. So, we all know about the great powers in World War II, such as Churchill's England, FDR's United States, and man with a funny mustache's Germany. But today I'm going to talk about one of the more obscure countries during World War II, and that country is... Greenland. In today's quick history episode, I talk about Greenland in World War II. Prior to the war, Denmark controlled Greenland, and was pretty strict with their colony. Greenland was essentially closed off to the rest of the world, and the land was basically inaccessible to foreigners. Yet, after the German invasion of Denmark in April of 1940, Greenland was essentially left on its own. But don't worry, Allied powers were quick to fill the gap that Denmark left. Initially, the United Kingdom wanted to establish, quote-unquote, points of interest on the island, which would give the Royal Navy access to key Arctic lanes and access to Norwegian countries during the war. Hearing this, the United States, who was still neutral at the time, was adamantly against the United Kingdom and Canada establishing bases on Greenland. The United States cited an emergency clause established in 1925 that declared if Denmark were to be invaded, then Greenland would be considered a self-ruling territory. This clause was confirmed by Danish ambassador to the United States, Henrik Kaufmann. So in a way, the United States basically said, hey England, if you have military bases on Greenland, you're essentially evading a sovereign country, which is what Germany was doing at the time. Today, historians cite the United States' involvement in Greenland as an extension of the famous Monroe Doctrine, which opposed European colonization in the Americas. And any such European colonization was considered a direct threat to the United States. So, you got that right, ladies and gentlemen. The Monroe Doctrine not only applies to Central America, but freaking Greenland. Who would have thought? Anyway, knowing Denmark would be a puppet of the Nazi regime, Kaufman, with advice from the United States, met with Greenland sheriffs to establish a temporary autonomous zone of Greenland. Despite the Danish government still attempting to give Greenland orders from Portugal, which included allowing Canada to occupy the territory, these orders were ignored, and it's probably a good thing that they were ignored. Interestingly enough, though, because he ignored the orders, Kaufman would be tried with treason after the war, but I'll get to that later. If Greenland officials listened to the Danish politicians, Greenland would have been drawn into the war when Canada and England were involved, meaning they would have gotten involved in the war a year and a half earlier. Moreover, Canada was working directly with Norwegian forces, and long story short, Norway has been trying to get Greenland for years, and putting Norwegian troops in Greenland could have led to Norway eventually taking control of the territory permanently. So, that wouldn't have been good. To fight off this threat, the United States agreed to send the United States Coast Guard to preserve Greenland's sovereignty, and the United States established a temporary consulate in Greenland. Greenland's measures to ensure sovereignty were some of the funniest stories I've ever read in World War II. For instance, Greenland forces were tasked with guarding remote parts of the territory, and therefore they needed ways to get to those remote parts. So, they established the Serious Dog Sled Patrol, which was a group of 15 Greenlanders, many of which were Inuits, who would ride on dog sleds with automatic rifles to protect the territory. FDR took a personal interest in the protection of Greenland, and in April of 1941, exactly one year after the invasion of Denmark, Greenland signed a treaty which allowed United States troops to be stationed in Greenland, making Greenland a de facto United States protectorate. Though it should be noted that the United States' actions were not completely noble, Greenland had a surplus of cryolite mines, don't even know what that is, but basically cryolite could be used for ore of aluminum. Because of Western powers, Greenland actually made a lot of money with these mines, but still, the United States profited off of it as well. When the United States officially joined World War II, there were some major changes in Greenland. For one, all diplomatic ties with Denmark were officially cut off. Moreover, the island officially introduced a rationing system and a national currency, which was also given to the United States troops stationed there, which is pretty interesting. Prior to the United States occupation, there was an estimated 19,000 natives and about 500 Danes in Greenland, but this number quickly ballooned as thousands of United States servicemen were stationed on the island. Though no major battles were fought in Greenland, the island had a major impact on the war on weather. What is the war on weather, you ask? Well, I'll explain. During World War II, intelligence was everything, meaning knowing any sort of weather data could be the difference between life and death. 
This meant that both the Allies and the Axis powers wanted to monopolize their intelligence regarding the North Atlantic and Arctic Oceans. In August of 1942, Germany sorta kinda invaded Greenland when they established four weather stations in Greenland's Sabine Island. This gave Germany the first leg up for information involving the two oceans, but once it was snuffed out by the Allies, Germany quickly packed up before a major battle could happen. Germany established more weather stations on Shannon Island, which ran successfully through spring of 1943, before it was discovered and other attempts to create weather stations were stopped by the United States Coast Guard. So, that's good. One story regarding the Germans involved a weather station in Hansa Bay, where our honorable dog sledge soldiers discovered the station. After the discovery of the dog sled team, were, they were chased away by Germans, but after their escape, they were declared the Army of Greenland and were given automatic weapons. The Germans in the sled dog forces would have multiple skirmishes during the war. In fact, one time the Germans attacked a weather station, and after they took the station, the Germans forced the Allied soldiers at the station to march 400 miles without sleds, food, or equipment. The last German weather station was captured by the U.S. forces on November 4th, 1944, and Greenland was officially free of German rule, even though they basically didn't rule anything. It was, like, remote forest and stuff but whatever they were free they could say that more than denmark on may 5th 1945 greenlanders celebrated the liberation of denmark and nook at the same time ambassador kaufman was charged with treason for disobeying the government's orders and establishing emergency powers but these charges were eventually dropped and the emergency powers agreement with the united states was ratified by the danish parliament of the greenlanders who fought in the war only one casualty took place and in a weird way, World War II was probably the best thing to ever happen to Greenland, as the years of sovereignty opened up the country to the rest of the world, and after the war, Denmark could no longer justify enforcing their isolationist policies in the region. So, Greenland was open. That's pretty cool. I guess, good job, World War II? Yikes. So, that's the story of Greenland during World War II. And what do you think? Did I just waste my time learning about one of the most obscure countries to ever fight in World War II, or was it interesting for you to learn about a never talked about aspect of the war? I feel like everything is pretty oversaturated in World War II, so this is kind of cool, but I don't know. Let me know if you want more videos on obscure countries during World War II, and if you want more World War II history, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks, guys.